Hey, happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, we have new data. We're showing a signal now of a huge Arctic blast that's going to be making its way into Canada, all the way into the U.S., all the way towards the Gulf of Mexico once again, guys, and potentially producing a large storm that could be going towards northeast, bringing a big nor'easter. Now, you can see this for this morning, what's going on with these storms. I got this for a reason, and this is a beautiful thing, by the way. All these storms going into the south, going to Louisiana, going to Mississippi. Now, you can see right here that you have this big hatch of thunderstorms. And if you look at it, you'll see that the dew points, this is your dew points, you got to have at least 55 to have thunderstorms in your area at least 55 dew points otherwise it's just going to be rain it's not going to be no big deal now, i wanted to show you that for a point because what we're about to have isn't going to bring much severe weather to the south maybe one day that we need to watch for going towards eastern texas though so there is one potential that's shown by national weather service i will go through that as well but this is what you can see when you have 55 dew points and starting to get stronger right here along the stormy side along just the rain and precipitation this is where your dew points are just too low to produce now this right here still this trough that's going to be coming into the u.s this is potentially bringing some severe weather for one day i will go through that as well it's not showing anything big and matter of fact the models are at disagreement of whether this is going to start bringing any kind of severe weather from the central to the east side of the u.s or just for the east coast so it's starting to push further and further to the east guys but this is that trophy that's going to start coming in and then we're going to that blast of cold air as well now you still see from national weather service there is still no severe weather out for the next eight days just some thunderstorms that's passing through now you can see here from national weather service that they are discussing this system coming in they're not showing any severe weather maybe one day in one small area on eastern texas and you can see here at the euro and gefs are both in agreement that indicate some severe potential may produce over south central on the 6th, day 6, on the 19th and the 20th, or day 7 on the 20th and 21st. Then shift eastward into the southeast after that. But right now, it's just too big of a variety between the two weather models, and they don't want to put out a severe warning just yet. But one is going to come out sooner or later for either day 6 or day 7. And you can see this from the Euro. I'm still showing the same thing. There's no big storm forming, guys. After we get the storms go by Florida and the Bahamas, once we get around six and seven days, your cape, your convective available potential energy, your lift, not showing a lot of lift passing through. Not strong at all, as this cold air is going to dive all the way down towards Mexico. Look how weak this lift. Now, you might get one day of severe weather kicking in, maybe right there as you go towards Tuesday. That's a potential. It's not a big potential, but it is a, a potential that you might have enough lift for a day of severe weather. But it keeps pushing further and further to the east. So as you look at what's going over Texas, you can see that is just very weak. And this is a year of very weak in your lift. And that's because you don't have a lot of dew points, a lot of heat just yet that's why i showed you the dew points in the beginning of the video and where the storms was actually forming so as you go through the week you see you start having the 40s you start getting the 50s as you go through wednesday still not enough dew points for severe weather and thunderstorms and as you go all the way to friday all the way to saturday you start getting some areas where you can have some thunderstorms these are the 55 dew points this is not the severe weather outbreak look to it this needs to be in the 60s going to the 70s for even worse case scenario but as you keep coming you can see that cold air does punch through now we'll go through that now one day once you get around day seven day eight you might get where that cold front produces a little bit of severe weather on Monday, the November 20th. This is literally so far away to know if this is going to even do anything. National Weather Service is only showing one, maybe two days right here. Right here is day seven and then day six right before that, even weaker. So day seven, maybe a little bit on day eight as that cold air punches towards Mexico and then it goes further to the east. But this cold air is coming all the way down. Look at this, shooting all the way into Mexico.
Still not showing anything super severe. You can see right here we have the thunderstorms. These are lightning strikes. So these thunderstorms is surface low. It's in the Gulf, and GFS did see this mostly getting heavier in the Gulf before the Euro a long time ago. I have seen both sides. I've seen Euro come to GFS. I've seen GFS come towards Euro. So you got to go by what's trending. Trends is your friend. And you can see after you keep going, as that system swings in, it's still nothing super severe. But as it punches down towards Mexico, as you go into the 20th and 21st, that's when it punches down. And that's when you start getting that kick a little bit to the east of some lightning strikes showing some possible thunderstorms. Now, the Euro is this one showing it could form up and go a little bit to the east. Still not showing no big outbreak of anything. Just a nice strong storm. Could be some winds. I'll go through that. Now, GFS is swinging this up to the northeast where it's going to be a potential nor'easter and bring in major snow. So when you go by your latest information on the AO, the Arctic Oscillation, you see we got this big warm-up coming in. You know, we got this big high ridge forming. But then we have the cold air coming in once again. I remember before it was showing a little cool pattern coming in the 20s. Now it's showing it's going to be a deep plunge, guys. Even trending with the Euro and the blue and the GFS and the red. Now once we get past this area where they're both showing this dip of cold air coming in, this part could change. This is the end of the Euro's reading. GFS is taking it deeper and deeper all the way towards the end of November. I've seen these change from this all the way to a complete warm-up. I've seen the total opposite. So let's not go by what's at the end of the data. If I keep showing you a 10-day forecast, it will change every single day when I upload a video. <laughs> But you can see in your EPO, your East Pacific Oscillation, your jet stream on the West Coast. That as you get in this dip of cool air coming all the way into the high teens in November. Now remember, when you're on the dip, we're on a high ridge on the East Coast. Kind of like what you have right here. You have a dip on the West Coast, you're going to have a ridge on the East Coast. That's where that warm temperatures above average is coming. But where are you on a high ridge on the West Coast? This is where you're going to get that deep trough on the east coast this is where that cold front's going to punch in so you can see you're going to be on a high ridge all the way from the 17th to the early 20s this is going to be at troughing coming in from the south to the southeast bringing in maybe that one day maybe two of severe weather nothing super big yet i will keep you updated but after that you got another trough all the way to late november of that cold air coming into the west coast just buckling the jet stream once again now that will bring a high ridge towards the east side of the U.S. when you get that deep trough later in November. Now, how far to the south and the southeast this cold air is coming is a different story. So far, it looks like it's punching straight south, straight down Texas into northern Mexico. Now, you can see this weather pattern change as you look for the next 6 to 10-day temperature probability. Well above average temperatures, but as you look at what's moving in after this, all the way to the 26th, you're still going to be above average towards the east coast because we're going to be in that trough and that high ridge. But this is that cool air coming in from what I just showed you. Plus, what storms could produce out of this pattern. So this is with the Euro. You see you have that surface low in the Gulf. You have them storms forming Wednesday, Thursday, pushing off Thursday and Friday. Now, the Euro is showing that that storm system coming in still isn't no big deal. And what's going to the northeast isn't adding up to too much rain at all. You have some cooler airs coming in. This is a 540 line. This is going to bring freezing temperatures. But at the same time, right on the 19th, you get a little system forming up. Now, this isn't showing a lot of severe weather. It is showing potential for winds. But once you go to Monday, once you go to almost eight days away, then you start seeing some severe weather popping up on the end of this low pressure building and as you watch it you can see it goes towards the east but it gets really big according to the euro the euro makes it a big system with a big wind field all those tight isobars are indicative to strong winds coming with this system as you go through tuesday on the 21st wednesday on the 22nd and storms keep going towards the east maybe still showing a nor'easter at the end of a 10-day run so it's still the 10-day run so let's take it a little bit by a little bit still showing we have a big wind field potentially popping up with the euro why you get another 988 strong system coming towards northwest bringing more rain for you as well now just trying to stick to the facts because you know i don't believe in fear porn here your risk for high winds so far you only got a slight risk from the 18th to the 20th 
for Washington and Oregon on that system I showed you in the Northwest. Big strong system. It's not showing anything for what the Euro is seeing. But when you look at 850 millibars, your lower level winds, you can see with the Euro as it comes in from Sunday into Monday, you start getting a big wind field start popping up on this storm. And it does strengthen a little bit more as it goes towards Northeast all the way till Wednesday. Remember, time and date is right here. This is Central Time, guys. But this is showing with the Euro that a strong storm is actually producing. At the same time, showing it to be all the winds will be offshore from what's going on in the Gulf now all the way to the East Coast. And when the system comes in for next week, as you go in from the 20th and on, it brings a lot of high winds towards northwest. That is 50, 60, even 70 miles per hour wind gusts. I will show you. So this is only with the, the Euro. Remember this. This is only with the Euro right now. A Euro is usually an accurate model. But like I said before, I've seen them favor the other models before. So just because Euro says this doesn't, doesn't make this set in stone and law. Showing some very high winds coming in through the northwest around that time as well. But it's going to move through the whole U.S. Now you see it's going to bomb all the way down to higher elevation straight south towards Texas, towards the South Central, towards Central Plains, even towards the Rocky Mountains. But then it's going to go towards the Northeast, bringing that potential Nor'easter. Now, I'm not showing a lot of impacts. It's not even trending with what's going on right here with the Euro. But this is a Euro, so I will show you these high winds potentially that's coming through. But what's trending is this potential Nor'easter in the Northeast that's coming as well. Now, as far as precipitation, you can see it's all over the place. You still got a slight risk in the northwest from the 18th to the 20th. But look at this wide area from the 18th to the 21st. So this still needs to get refined some more, guys, because I'm sure this is a long scenario. This is all the way from the 18th to the 24th. So that's going in 10 days, and 10 days always change. Five days always change. Three days <laughs> always refines. So you can see just for the next four to five days for the next five days right there 120 with the euro you get a rainfall coming all the way down california and you get most of the rainfall on the southern storms you're still getting it in the south but a lot of the heaviness is in the gulf now gfs did see that first and euro always took it inland gfs always took the heaviest off so i will say gfs did see that first as it covers over florida and over the bahamas as well a lot of heavy rainfall coming your way. So far, what the Euro's showing is it's going to skimp on by across the south and the east as you get this rainfall. Stay right along the Gulf Coast, but hit on Florida pretty heavy. As a matter of fact, it could add up to more if we stay in this pattern, bringing that heavy rainfall all the way towards the east coast. Now, remember, this is an area that has that precipitation watch you can see how it's widespread but it is different between euro and gfs gfs agrees in the next six days that you have all this heavy rainfall a little bit further to north but mostly still in the gulf plus what's coming along the west coast and you can see that next storm system adding up all the way towards northeast as well not showing the same as what the euro so they're both still showing different you never take it too far guys so just the next six days you can see the same thing with the GFS is right along the Gulf Coast, and that is where all the main cities is anyway. All along the whole U.S., all the main cities are along the edge, the highest populations along the edge of the U.S. And look at all this heavy rainfall coming. You see how it's different for Florida on both models. But both of them are showing that it is coming to the West Coast regardless. You are going to get this going all the way down California still. So just with National Weather Service model, the next three days, let's do three days at a time. So the West Coast, so far in the next three days, you'll get a lot heavier for the coast of California, one to two inches, but you are going to keep getting more rainfall coming in, and it's going to get heavier as this storm system keeps coming in. This is going to sit offshore for a few days and bring you all some more rainfall, that's for sure. But it is going to bring heavier across the south, the south central, and the southeast, bringing rainfall, additional rainfall, all the way into Texas, just the next 72 hours, see how that stays in the Gulf bringing over an inch along the Gulf Coast. It's really going to hit really good over Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Panhandle, Florida. This is good. We need this beneficial rainfall. And you can see this from here. We just need that heavy rainfall to add up, guys.
Now, there is some chances for some flooding that's coming out of this. Of course, you've been in a drought, so any rainfall is going to bring a lot of flooding. For today, you have the marginal chance for flash flooding. For tomorrow, it's going to move into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. And as you go into Wednesday, it's going to keep going towards the southeast, going towards Georgia now. As you go through Thursday, it's going to start adding up for the coast of Florida. Now, just to show you what's trending, you can see with GFS, the storm system going over Florida out into the east coast. You still got your storm system just sitting off the coast of the California, just sitting there spinning for a few days while it goes out through the northeast and don't bring nothing but some rainfall. Now, as the system starts rolling in, as we go through the 20th, you see it's not bringing a lot of severe weather with it. It's bringing that punch straight down towards Mexico, and the system actually forms right here. We get a nice little troughing over the Great Lakes, and the system forms the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and goes out through the northeast for the 22nd, the 23rd, and strengthening, guys. This is cyclogenesis, a strengthening low pressure. goes down to 980, 975. By the 23rd, this is literally 10 days right here. So it will change. I will keep you updated. But this is what I wanted to show you. Just because the Euro is showing you that southern storm, that don't mean that's what's going to happen, guys. I think this is what's trending. Now, you can't see too far with the Canadian right now in the latest upload, but you can see the latest upload that it does punch to the south. And that, that system, that storm forms up in the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, not in the south, guys. Potentially going to the northeast while it gets all this cold air rushing straight towards the south. This is what's trending forming up here, not down here. Now, when you look at your cape with the GFS, you can see everything makes a little more sense now. You get a little bit of cape right there on the 20th, right there on the 6th day, like National Weather Service is saying. Right there for Texas, you get one area where it could get a little lift to create some thunderstorms. Maybe one day of severe weather, maybe some hail, something might come out of that. I'm not talking no serious tornadoes. I've seen people say tornado outbreak is not happening, guys. But you can see with the lift, while it goes all the way to the northeast and brings that potential nor'easter to the northeast. So a lot of this is going to be offshore. You see how it takes forever to build up? That is not showing any strong signal of no serious storm about to form up, guys. That is not showing an outbreak. And you can see the difference with dew points with GFS. So as we go to the 19th and the 20th, we get that very cold plunge going all the way towards Mexico. You get that one day of severe weather. Now, this is what National Weather Service is talking about. You get that one day of severe weather where you get into the 60 dew points right around Monday the 20th. And you get that front right on in. That dry line comes in. But look at that punch of that cold air that comes in right behind that. The story is actually the big Arctic blast. That's that's big storm. It might produce one day severe weather, showing a big wind field, not showing it with other models, just with the Euro, so that could change as well. And you see how it punches south, keeps all them dew points to the south, guys. As that punches south, and then that goes out towards the southeast. Still keeps you warm in your dew points over to southeast, as that goes out through the northeast with that potential northeast or all. Probably going to be off land, but you have them cold temperatures on a wraparound, so it's bringing that potential snowstorm. But the cold air is coming back in, guys. And you can see the winds with GFS. It's not showing that big system revolving around. It's showing it's going to form up around the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and go out through the northeast. And that's where your winds are on this system for the east coast 50 60 even showing some 70 up in there but when you look at your lower level temperatures you can see as you go through the teens it stays northern but then you get that punch of cooler air and then as you go into the 20s here comes that arctic blast boom all the way towards the south this is what's bringing that big wind field around it as well as that swings east with the cold air now the cold air aloft is what would strengthen that system but i'm not showing the trend is right here in the south I'm showing it's a little further to the east is going to be the storm. It might bring one day of severe weather, but this storm is going to swing east. And look with the GFS. It punches south with all that very cold air, but then it punches to the east, and you get that potential nor'easter. Why you got all them very cold temperatures aloft, freezing temperatures down below. Why you get a storm system, you can see it right here, building up after that as well. That's 12 and 13 days, so we're not even going to talk about that that's just crazy even talk about something 10 days is crazy but i gotta show you what's trending but i gotta show you what's trending just so you know what is going on out there now it's too far to start showing you what we can have we still in this above average temperatures you can see this this is all the way for thursday guys as this cold air comes in for this weekend all the way until saturday and sunday this is your temperatures this is not wind chills 
And then we're going to have another punch coming in after that even colder air setting in as we go into the 20s, 21st, and the 22nd of November, maybe even longer. This is a euro. And you can see the same thing on GFS. So we're in above average temperatures all the way until we get to this weekend. Then that cold air is coming all the way in. Now we're going all the way until Sunday. Very cold temperatures going into Monday, Tuesday. Then we got that big bomb coming in on the 21st, the 22nd, and the 23rd. Very cold temperatures coming in. This is bringing 20s, guys. This is bringing a lot of cold temperatures with it and potentially going even colder as we go into the 20s. I will keep you updated. It's too far to be accurate right now. The only difference we have right now is GFS takes it a little bit deeper as you go into the 20s of November with the wind chills and the temperatures. Very cold moving in. I will keep you updated. Showing so far in the next seven days with the Euro, Maybe some snow for high elevations of Idaho, Montana, the Cascades, maybe up here for Colorado. That's about it. And then afterwards, maybe a storm system moving in, bringing more heavy snowfall over here to the higher elevations, and maybe some coming to the north central. That's about it. GFS next seven days, sees over here for the higher elevations, not much for northeast as well, but sees that next system could come in for the Great Lakes and swing all the way in could bring some over to tennessee kentucky valley that could be something right before it gets before the mountains over there for the mid-atlantic so it could be for the ohio valley tennessee kentucky could bring some snow and some major snow over a foot for the northeast a lot of precipitation and a lot of cold temperatures so far showing over two feet almost three and that's a lot of snowfall that's going to be adding up potentially coming right around the 20s guys the early 20s potentially bringing a nor'easter now we still don't know the outcome of that as well it's just too far away one is showing that it could bring a little bit less one is showing it could bring a lot less so it's still too far to be accurate at all all this is way too far to take seriously i will keep you updated every single day because so far all they have right now is a slight risk in this purple from the 18th through the 20th for heavy snowfall Thank you so much for your time, everybody. That has been the latest impacts and the information. I will keep you updated. Make sure you do subscribe. Now, I haven't been uploading every Sunday lately because it's been some very nice weather. Matter of fact, my family and I have taken vacation this time last year, and we didn't uh, do it this year. But that's why I've been taking off on Sundays. But I will be on this every day for y'all so y'all know what to expect and what is coming out without any hype, just so you know the facts, the temperatures, potential storms, and what is coming out of this pattern. Now, before you go today, I want to talk to you real quick on Proverbs 29, 25 through 27. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Amen. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe every day of your life, you and your family, and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody.